Hello my peeps, welcome back to my office. Today we are doing a bit of a calligraphic experiment. No, not really. This is not a video about like fancy handwriting and none of that like beautiful typography that you can see all over Pinterest. No, this is simply a little video I'm making to maybe help you in your process of creating a digital version of your handwriting. I am currently working on kind of like a little rebrand for everything I'm doing. You know, I'm trying to find ways of visually just like tie things together. So I've already given it a go a couple of times and I found what's the best way of doing it for me. So when I draw, I usually have that like specific little handwriting yeah, like just like my handwriting. Everyone has their own handwriting style, right? So I have one that's um basically just this like lazy print lettering, you know, it's not cursive or anything. And then I have a one that's kind of like slightly more fancy, which is the one I use mostly for like artwork. Um, I'm gonna show you. Okay, so last year, last year I worked on uh, on the stamps for a company that makes stationery in Czech Republic and they're actually wanting to you know explore foreign markets as well and currently we're working on some stickers together so these are the stickers I've designed and you can see that like most of the like the writing it has this like handwriting feel to it but um like this I would say that what makes it the most stand out -y compared to how I normally type is that it has serifs, you know, the little bits at the ends. So without any further ado, let me show you the website that I use to make my font. Uh, it is called... <laughs> That's what it's called. It's called Calligrapher and it's made by people in Germany, I believe. And it's a site that offers both free service and premium service. I believe that if you do pay for the premium, it's about, it's like $8 for a month of premium. And it's not like something where you pay for one month and then it just keeps rolling. It's just like one off month of having the premium service. Uh, at least I hope so. That makes the most sense to me, right? If you pay for the premium, you get to work on like multiple uh, fonts at once, you get access to more styles. Personally, because I am Czech and Czech language has a buttload of like really weird like things going on in our alphabet. I thought, yeah, like eight dollars, I can write it on my taxes. It's now, uh, you know, it's a creative expense. Uh, I totally need this for my business. Yes. Uh, so yeah, that happened. So my review, my experience is from the perspective of someone who doesn't have access to the premium, but from what I've seen, a lot of the premium things I did not actually use. Basically for me, the only reason why I went for the premium was to have access to all the special uh, special bits, special like graphic signs that the Czech alphabet uses. And you know, like with that I got access to things like, you know, Danish and Japanese and things like that. Obviously, you can also just think of it as supporting the great people who made this, you know, a dollar so it's probably only gonna get them like a coffee, so especially in Germany. Now on to the actual font making. Uh, as I said, I already made one and I'm gonna now tell you what my process was. Uh, you can see it here, the khaki font. Um, and you can see these are all the characters I have, so these are some of the sort of Standard. This is the, the capital letters. Capital letters. This is the tiny letters. But how we got here, that's the more important thing. Okay, so the sort of default way of doing this is that in the web, on the website you, um, you choose which characters you want in your fonts. That's like the first step. You basically go through like you get the basic alphabet and then you say okay but I also want the characters that will let me use this in you know Czech setting Hungarian setting whatever like I, I also want some like advanced mathematical characters so you can also get that uh, yeah and then you end up with multiple sheets that look like this 
they have the little uh, QR code on top because basically it lets you download this and then you go and print it out and yeah and then you just write it in I used my brush pen uh, I used my brush pen as you can see you get the option there's you probably won't see it and that's part of what's my problem with doing it this way um, this grid is supposed to come with like not only like it obviously tells you here in the little line above what's the character you're supposed to write into the box makes sense but also it's supposed to have like this little like a little shade like a gray super super light version of the character kind of on the background and it's supposed to be light enough for the scanner to then not pick it up as a part of what you wrote but obviously it should be dark enough for you to see it uh, I printed this on the highest quality on my printer and I still can't see sleep it was so hard like once I started looking for it I saw a tiny bit of it and because the thing is it really helps it really helps you to see that like pre-printed little guide because it, it lets you you know keep the sizing same ish you know it I think it's really helpful but it would be more helpful if it worked better so I scanned it and I wasn't too happy with the outcome because it kind of vectorizes uh, you know the, the images that are in the boxes which makes sense it's a it's a pretty fast process and I'm pretty sure that it's also made faster by me having the premium account yeah when I first saw this when I started working with the paper sheets I wasn't too happy but I have to say that then when you go and build a font and it lets you download it and it also shows you how it looks in sentences uh, then it started looking kind of okay but I wasn't 100% sure if I really liked it so I thought I'm gonna give it one more go and what I did was I went the good old way of just like drawing it digitally so yeah you basically get this this is like a 60% view of it uh, and you get the grid you see you know small grid big grid and you just keep going and on here like, you will probably not see it, but you'll have to trust me when I tell you that on here you actually do see the little shadow, scary, you know, ghost versions of the characters you're doing, uh, which is super duper helpful. I think we're now gonna go and try and make the other one, as I said. I feel like I've been talking forever. This is gonna be such a pain to edit. Uh, I might have had a Red Bull because it took me a lot of time to force myself to shoot this video and I have some people coming over later this week and I won't be really able to shoot so I thought lady you have to do this like you have to do it today <sighs> okie dokes you guys uh, we are back here and we're gonna download a new template uh, I think that you go here and you can see here this is this is uh, the layout where are you the interface that's the word I'm looking for yeah in this interface you can create things and you can see here like on the side I have like minimal Spanish, minimal French, minimal German because that's all I'm gonna be doing just some minimal German maybe anywho uh, yeah so this is the collection of the things I want and a pro tip for you guys when I started I actually had a lot more of these in my collection and the problem is you get really tired like when you're filling it in especially by hand it's it's a pain so when you do like inevitably the first one will be crap so then you go back and just like think about it and remove the ones that you know you just will not need you know just be be economical with the choice of character okay you download the template uh, I'm gonna do with PNG because PNG is gonna be more friendly towards being used in Photoshop. Uh, and here you can see uh, draw helplines. Those are the little lines that tell you where you know where to place the thing. And characters is the light gray character I told you about. It default sets as not there, but it I really find it helpful. So let's do that. 
and then download. Yeah! Okay, so another tip might be obvious, but um, you know, go into your layers, create the next layer. Because then, you know, sometimes you just go all gung-ho into it and like you draw the characters right onto the first layer, which means that then when you want to like move them around, uh, I'm not gonna lie to you guys, but the first time I was creating the digital version of the first font, I did not create that top layer, so you guys are now learning throughout my mistakes. Okay, so I'm finished. My arm hurts. It probably took me, oh man, I don't know, like about an hour if you count faffing on Tumblr somewhere in the middle and my arm really hurt. Yeah, so this is all four sheets. What I did, so uh, not here, um, here. So at a certain point, I went in and I copied some of these basic ones and and I copied them into here. You can do that to give it kind of like a better consistency, but you also don't have to if you want it to feel really like hand drawn. Um, also like with these special characters, again like there's a chance you guys won't even have those in your set. And honestly, I also don't feel like I'm gonna be using them very often, but I still really needed to conserve some energy for my hand and arm because I'm just not used to like drawing something with such a level of concentration. So we're gonna upload. You now it takes a bit of time to process, but not too much. Again, I think that it says that when you buy premium, you get processed faster. And here we go, so this is the preview and as I said in the preview sometimes it doesn't look as good as you'd like it to look, that's okay, like then when it's smaller and it's been um, made into the actual font it looks smoother and nicer. Okay, and again as I said to check things it's better to process it into an actual font and then have a look see what it looks like. Ooh, this is odd, it's cute. Okay, so looking in this, I'm happy with the characters but I'm not really happy with the spacing because this is too much spacing for me. Let's have a look at the check one. Oh, that's pretty cool. I like it. Okay, so like look wise, I'm really happy. Like this is, this is the sort of look I was going for. That's great, but I do need to change the... Okay, um, where do I... Yes, okay, so let's try this. Let's let's try put it on 50. 
save and now let's build it build mm. okay that's better I like that so one carpal tunnel later uh, we are done with my second font I'm pretty excited because I've been putting this off for so long and it's been keeping me from finishing other things that had to do with the branding thing so I'm pretty happy that it finally happened for now let's just quickly recap if you don't have a graphics tablet just print things out I recommend you print out two to four copies of the template because you're gonna mess up especially the first time you're gonna find that like as you start thinking about it your handwriting becomes this mysterious thing like you you will forget what your handwriting is like it's good to have some sort of reference it's good to have like you know some notes just to because you will forget how you write things it's it's amazing how fast that happens so yeah just get a couple copies and you know have a plan B and C and possibly D once you upload them I recommend first like try to export it straight away to see how the font looks in use uh, you will most probably see things that you don't like straight away uh, in which case I recommend uh, playing around with the spacing with the sizing also, you know, there's spacing between letters and spacing between words and you also get like editing options which I actually did use this time because um, the serifs in some of the characters were just too pronounced so I used the inbuilt eraser which is not very good it's basically like a square thing it's like a, it's like a huge pixel just, yeah it only, I, it only really is good for fixing small things. I believe that they actually added the eraser in there because like if the scanner picks up some sort of fluff or you know um, you made a mistake and you put like a little ink dot on the side the eraser will be you know will do a good job erasing that and once it feels kind of good enough you know don't forget Photoshop will let you deal with all like individual spacing so you don't have to get too anal about it just you know remember that you will be able to fix things that's it for me for now i will come back to you later with some tips on how to brand yourself and how to brand pretty much anything but i will be looking at it from the perspective of branding my own like brand as a creator which honestly has turned out to be so much harder than like doing branding for a company because you're basically limiting yourself like you're telling yourself okay I'm just gonna make just these things and they're just all gonna be in these colors and as a creator that can be like so intimidating uh, until then I hope you're having a good time hopefully this was at least like semi helpful for you if you have any cool tips on how to do your own handwritten fonts or if you want to tell me that this super helped you or if you want to tell me that this sucked but you can tell me in the comments below uh, I read all of them and happily reply to all questions and such until next time don't forget to like and subscribe